Model steam engines, top tip time. This one is part 16, and this episode is absolutely jam-packed full of useful tips. Even some expert machinists may learn something watching this. The last few top tip time episodes have been using compilations from a video series I made in 2019 called A Stuart Model's Beam Engine Rebuild. I need to use some sort of a chronological system. I can't just dart about editing clips from two and a half thousand videos. And yes, that is how many steam engine videos I have on YouTube as of the 6th of July 2023. This episode of Top Tip Time contains a lot of the answers to the questions that viewers send me all of the time, and I hope you find it useful. Whenever you rebuild an engine, it does need some running in, and on some of the tighter moving parts, the lubricating oil turns black. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you this stuff. British Cold Press Rapeseed Oil. You can buy it from your local supermarket, and it's very cheap. And here's what it does. As you can see, it's naturally high in omega-3. It's a great alternative to olive oil, and it's also ideal for frying, baking, roasting, and dressing. So what has this got to do with miniature steam engines? It's a lovely colour. I'm going to add some of this to my oil mixture. Once upon a time when I was a computer engineer, I did a job in an oil refinery in Glasgow. I was talking to a scientist at this oil refinery, and I asked him which was the best anti-friction additive. And to my surprise, he said, rapeseed oil is very good. And I've been adding this to my lubricating oil for a while. I used to make my own lubricating oil, which comprised of 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil, and 25% rapeseed oil. I want to see if there's any noticeable difference by adding this to my normal lubricating oil, which I get from a company called Hallett's Oils. I mentioned it in a previous episode. I shook the oil can very thoroughly, and before using it, I drained off some of the oil that was already in the spout. Do not mix this stuff with steam oil that you're going to use to lubricate your steam cylinder. This is for lubricating oil only. A final check on the valve timing shows me that the air has been admitted just before top dead centre and just before bottom dead centre. But it is minutely out, so obsessively I give it a quick tap with my small hammer. And now I'm approaching the time when I really need to go and lay in a darkened room and take my medication. It's worth it because the engine is now running fairly well for what it is. It will never be perfect and it still clatters a bit when it's at high speed with a big load on the flywheel. Caution, do not do this. I have a degree in stupidity so I can do it. I'm applying some side pressure to the main connecting rod and suddenly it gets a lot quieter. So some of this noise that you hear is just connecting rod side slap, which is very common. A live steam test of the rebuilt beam engine. This steam test has to be a short steam test because I do not have a displacement lubricator fitted to the engine. The burner is a very small sievert blowtorch head. I like this because it's not much of a flame, it isn't too noisy, but it gives plenty of heat. This clip shows me connecting a short piece of silicone rubber pipe from the exhaust pipe on the engine down into a plastic tub under the bench. If I don't do this, then there'll be exhaust steam everywhere and a bit of a mess on the baseboard. This boiler is a fire tube boiler and it's quite efficient and in no time at all, there's a little bit of pressure and it's more than enough to run the engine. As I've just mentioned, as there isn't a displacement lubricator, then I'm going to keep the pressure low. If I keep the pressure low, the temperature of the steam will also be low and the saturated wet steam will lubricate the cylinder. It's worth remembering that water can be a lubricant. For instance, on the hand pump, the only thing lubricating the main ram is the water as it passes through the pump. If you've been following this series, then you will be aware that I have been running this engine for quite a while using compressed air and plenty of oil. The silicone rubber exhaust pipe exhausts into a plastic tub and I noticed quite a lot of black oil coming out of the cylinder. So steam tests will be good just to clean everything up. And as you can see, it's running very well indeed. When I first started this project, I wasn't sure whether to complete it or whether to smash it to pieces with my Viking war axe, as part of a series that I would like to make called Alternative Uses for Viking War Axes. The engine is running quite well on 10 to 15 pounds per square inch, which I think is about the pressure you would run a Mamod or a similar steam toy engine on. 
and at this very low pressure the engine runs surprisingly fast. If you look at the gas burner pointing into the boiler flue, you'll see how small the flame is. Even though this flame is very long, thin and pointy, it's quite hot. And in this clip I've turned the gas burner right down, so there isn't much of a flame in there, but there's enough to provide steam to run the engine. I'm quite pleased with the slow running capability of this engine, although watching this clip back I realised that the timing does need just a little tiny tweak. At this stage I turned the gas burner off and it finally ran out of steam and stopped. And what do you do after a steam run with a steam engine? I connect a compressor to the inlet and blow compressed air through the engine. Then I squirt some WD-40 into the compressed air fitting, then reconnect the compressed air to the engine, which injects WD-40 into the steam chest and cylinder. And the last thing I always do is put some steam oil in. It's very important to do this after running a cast iron steam engine on steam. You don't need a lot, just a squirt into the air fitting like this. Then reconnect the airline and run the engine. And when steam oil comes out of the exhaust pipe, then you know everything's okay. Some oils will actually attack silicone rubber. The steam oil doesn't. And please, please, do not use motor oil. Motor oils can cause a lot of problems in steam engines. They frequently attack the silicone rubber. So let's hope this time most people have got it because I'm forever getting people asking me, oh, can I use motor oil? No, don't use motor oil. Do not use motor oil. Motor oil is for internal combustion engines and the steam engine is an external combustion engine. The combustion takes place in and around the boiler, depending, of course, on the design of the boiler. I'm just having another obsessive check of the valve timing. This engine seems to be very happy with early admission, which is the way it should be. The steam or compressed air is admitted just before top and bottom dead centre. The reason for this is to cushion the mechanical parts. And many model steam engines that I come across have got very late admission, that's why they knock. This one is beginning to run a lot better. Whenever you dismantle a model steam engine and rebuild it, using new parts or sometimes not even using new parts, just disturbing it upsets it a bit. That's why often they need a bit of gentle tweaking and a bit of running just to bed everything in. And also, the important bit, when you run a steam engine on steam, certain parts of the steam engine get very hot, therefore they expand and move around a little bit. And when the hot parts cool, they often settle back into a better position than they were in in the first place. I do love steam engines because they're a machine that really needs to run in harmony to function. Particularly steam engines with more than one cylinder. I would normally set each cylinder individually, getting the valve timing as close as I can on each cylinder before I run them as a pair. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.